everyone and in today's video we're going to be looking at how to quickly read through a research paper to extract the most important information and be doing this using a tool called Scholarcy that will help guide us with the key information and we'll look at how we can input that information in our literature database. So the first thing that we need to know before we begin is that when we want to quickly and efficiently read a paper we need to look at five main areas and these are the title, abstract, the research questions, the conclusions and the discussions. So if you don't have the Scholarcy browser extension, just search for Scholarcy um, browser extension in Google. Um, and then once you click on that, it will take you to the download page and you can find download it here. I've already added it, so you can see this not, it's not showing up on my screen, but once you've downloaded it, you can then go to the puzzle piece and then you'll find that it's been installed as an extension in your browser. Okay, so once we've done that, we can then go back to our research article and we will open the puzzle piece, open the Scholarcy browser extension, and then you'll see it will start loading with the key areas that we need to look at. So we said there are five main areas that we need to be looking at in order to efficiently and quickly analyze the paper. First thing that we said is to really look at the title. And here we can see the title says the effect of educational games on learning outcomes, student motivation, engagement and satisfaction. So I need to consider here, does the title have the key words that are important? If it ticks the boxes and it has the key words that you're looking for, then you should carry on. If not, you really should be skipping this article and not wasting your time with it. Um, in my case, I'm looking at digital games and I'm looking at like things like uh, student motivation, engagement, satisfaction. So this is an excellent title for me, even though it's focusing on educational games, not digital games, but it still falls under that broader aspect of educational games. So I will be carrying on reading this article. Now, the next thing that is extremely important um, that we said we need to look at is the abstract. And one of the uh, purposes of the abstract is that it's a brief summary of the scientific paper or the journal article and it provides you with an overview of four important things. Um, it tells you what the research questions are, it tells you uh, the, the results and the conclusion all extremely concisely. So I, I really feel that the abstract can decide for you whether you carry on reading that paper or not um, and if not you, you just move on. Um, we move on to looking at how Scholarcy can help us with that in terms of reading the abstract. The good thing about Scholarcy and the abstract is that it doesn't summarize the abstract. It just gives it to you exactly as it is. So, for example, here, while educational games have been increasingly popular in education, insufficient studies have comprehensively reviewed their effectiveness. And you can see that it's the exact same wording in the article, while well, educational games and so on. But what it has done is that it's highlighted for us um, uh, information and you'll see that the color codes have specific meanings. So the orange highlights usually show the contributions that the authors have made, whereas the purple shows any important points that you might find in the article. So if we're looking at this abstract uh, background information and here it's said while well, educational games have been increasingly popular in education, insufficient studies have comprehensively reduced their effectiveness. So it's telling us that you know there's a missing gap here that you know there's not enough studies really that have tackled the effectiveness and then they go on to say that they're going to be filling this gap by um, this by showing us that they've explored the game-based learning and they've specifically looked at academic achievement, problem solving, and so on. Now, they um, love their methods. This hasn't been highlighted by Scholarcy, but we can clearly see it here. It's based on a comprehensive literature analysis. So I know that the method in the study is going to be um, a review. It's a, a synthesis of the literature. It's not going to include an empirical study. Again, is that you know, something that's interesting to me that I am to look at a review or am I mostly interested in empirical studies? In that case, I won't carry on reading this. So again, you to be there if you're thinking about what your purpose for reading this article is. Is it to collect the information, to have a synthesis of the literature, or are you looking to mainly replicate studies so you're really interested in methods? And in that case, you ignore this article and look for something else. And then they tell us their conclusions or what they found, uh, which is basically that the future research should highlight. This is their suggestions that they're making, uh, analytics and data mining. 
techniques of educational games and find out solutions to address various problems to, to improve the effectiveness. So we really see that from the abstract, already making decisions, we're understanding what this paper is about and determining what information we'd like to further know about or whether we don't really need to go into depth into this article. The third thing that we need to be looking at when we're reading our research paper is the research question that's in the paper and you'll usually find that at the end of the introduction. So if you go to the introduction, the introduction will have the background information, it will have the theoretical uh, literature background that the paper has used. Um, if you need, if you're focusing on the theoretical background, you can usually spend some time on that. But if you're, if you're not, that's not the main area that you're looking at, then the best thing to do is scroll towards the end of the introduction and you'll see here that they will have the research questions usually at the end of the introduction. And in this case, we have four research questions. Could learning outcomes be greatly improved in educational game-based learning? Could student motivation be greatly improved uh, in educational game-based learning? And so on. So they've got four research questions. And like we said, you'll usually find them at the end of the introduction. And why do we need to know this? The research questions will give you the directions and the purpose of the paper. Once you know the research questions, then again, you're, you're forming a decision as to whether this paper is relevant to the information that you're looking for and you're trying to extract. And remember, the whole idea here is that we're trying to quickly form a decision about whether to spend a lot of time on this paper or whether to just extract general overview information. And we need to be able to have that skill because spending too much time on every single paper is a complete time waster. So that was number three. And now for number four, we need to then completely skip over the research methods, completely skip over the results because they're not really relevant for us right now. And for the last part, we need to be focusing on the discussions and the conclusions. Okay, and then for the fourth section, we've said that we need to be looking at the discussions. And so again, we'll open up policy um, to help us with this. And then we'll scroll down um, and it's good to go to the policy summary for this. And you'll see that it's broken up the various section in very concise uh, sections. So for example, if we look at the conclusion, uh, they straight away tell us that there's difficulty in determining the effectiveness of educational games and even though there's a dramatic development um, we know that there's uh, essentially difficulty in using them in these fields and then they haven't been generally accepted and that we should not arrive at a hasty conclusion because that although they could be effective but they don't really have results that tell us that they definitely improve learning outcomes, student motivation, engagement and satisfaction. So really concise conclusion. Obviously you need to go back and generate some more information on this, but if you just wanted a very quick summary in terms of what you wanted to find out, this is a good idea. You could also go to the Scholarly highlights and it will give you in bullet points uh, some key highlights of the paper. Uh, for example, uh, games have been increasingly accessible to educators. They've been used in various kinds of approaches. Um, it also looks at various outcomes and then what future research suggests or what basically their conclusions were. Because remember, this is a review paper, so these are actually their findings and their discussions. Um, the different sections uh, that you can find as well are the key concepts. And you can see how we're going to be using them um, to fill in our literature uh, review database. So we've got educational games, student engagement, academic achievement, language learning. Notice also that it sometimes brings some random things like Sciences Citation Index. So be careful. You remember these AI tools don't always pick up the most accurate information. So you also have to be careful when you're reading this to make sure that you're using uh, the right information. Um, another important aspect that I read about scholarship that could be really useful when you're looking at your um, um, at the paper is to look at the limitations. I always look at this um, where I'm quickly scanning the paper because it just helps me to see is there a gap that I can fill with my paper and here it gives us two main limitations in the study. On the one hand the databases from which they retrieved their literature were limited um, and on the other hand the study adopted a content analysis without statistical support. So we know that from the beginning it's a review study but they're highlighting that okay maybe we need to move on to empirical studies to add the support our, our results. Um, the other really good thing that you can extract from Scholarly um, is the uh, comparative analysis. 
and what it does is it extracts from the paper um, any information that actually support um, or, or differ from previous work. So if we look here at this section, it tells us about the research methods and prior work. Um, and then it, it tells us how it differs from previous work as well, which is interesting. And this is something that you can use uh, to compile in your paper. So now having looked at and quickly read through this paper, understood its content, uh, briefly formed our um, understanding of whether we want to use this paper, assume this is all we want from this paper, we don't want to go into any more depth, then what we can do next is use the information from Scodacy to fill in our literature review, which I'll show you how to do um, in the next section. So this is the Notion database that we're using. And I've showed you how to create this database in a previous video. Um, if you'd like to see that, I'll leave you the link at the end of this video so you can look at how you can set up the columns and the different sections. For our purposes, we're going to scroll down and we're going to start completing, putting the information that we have extracted from this last paper so the first thing I need to do is add the title. What is the effect of educational games or learning outcomes, student motivation, engagement and satisfaction? So I'm just going to copy that title from my article and then go back and enter it here. The next thing I need to add is the author. So it would be Yu, Gao and Wang um, and the date is 2020. So then I'll enter that. I'll go into the section and then I've got Yu, Gao and Wang, 2020. I can do the journal later. And then the uh, next thing, which is the topic, um, Scholarship can help us with that. So if I go back to my article and I open up my uh, Scholarship extension, you'll see at the top here where it gives us the key concepts. I can see there's educational games, student engagement, uh, student achievement, and then I can begin to add all these in my database. So here I can add educational games, I've already got that, so I'll select it. I can also add um, motivation, okay, and so on. And you can keep on adding as many topics as you want. For the key insights, I can go to my um, scholarly highlights and I can take some of the uh, important findings that the study has, has uh, indicated. So you can take this section, for example, go back to our table, and then input the information in our key insights. Again, just make sure you review the information. Scholarship is not always accurate, so it'd be always good to, to see it, and, and then so on. And you can complete that for the theoretical framework, the key findings and results um, and limitations, put the link to the study and so on. So what Scholarship does is really just simplify the process of you extracting the information. It helps guide you along as you uh, look for the key elements of a paper. And as we saw, there are really interesting parts like comparative analysis, for example, where you can add extra features to your database, so that when you come back to it, you find everything there and it's a uh, straightforward process. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and you found it useful and see you in the next video.